I had to swap my piranha jaw to the outsides to give myself enough room to mount the uh, casting in here. I wanted to go ahead and get a couple uh, proper length bolts in here. Dang. Tight fit on them bolt heads. These, uh, these jaws work really good for this, holding this uh, raw casting. That yeah, looks pretty good right there. The way that the uh, MMM guys machine these things, you got, it's a, it's a real coarse serrated sharp edge right there. So it's like teeth that just bite into the metal to help prevent uplift from your parts. And that should be, that should be good there. All we want to do, all we're wanting to do here on this op is to uh, machine this bottom side right here for the uh, mounting plate. Let's see if we can uh, find the top of this cast surface right there. I just picked this point here. All right, I did it wrong. I guess I went the wrong way. <laughs> I got to put a negative value in there, I believe. All right, let's try it again. God, this makes me nervous with that, that probe there. We put negative 250. Okay. All right, that should be our uh, uh, Z zero position, the top of this right here. Roughly getting it in the middle there, about three and three eighths from each side. So what we're going to do is just center it up on this web here and uh, both X and Y to find the center. Okay, let's give this a shot. Run, cycle start. We're going to be doing X first. All right, that should be the center in X. Now we got to go do that again in Y. So I'm going to go back to probe and just going to change our uh, web probe operation to Y axis. Same distance of seven inches and we should be ready to go. I believe it does that in Z to make sure that it's not going to hit anything, even though it's in the middle of that. Okay, we're in the center of our part for, uh, this is our G54 position too. Okay, so hopefully we're gonna make a little more progress on our fixture plate. I have been uh, working on the uh, program here for the uh, Fireball Tool fixture plate uh, with the help of my friend Steve up at Miltronics. Every time I kind of run into a little hiccup here or hurdle that I can't get past, I'll uh, email Steve or call him and he uh, works me through the program right here. It's just gonna be a lot of repetitiveness, muscle memory to remember exactly everything I need to do. This is still all brand new to me, so I'm just trying to learn it, all right? But I'm gonna give you a, a little preview of the, uh, the simple program that we wrote here to start machining the bottom side of this cast iron fireball tools welding fixture. So we got the program up here now, and uh, here's, a, here's a look at our fireball fixture. And what we want to do, the first stop is simply milling the surface flat, drilling and tapping the four holes to mount um, so that you can mount it to the steel fixture uh, or whatever. If you was to mount this to a table or anything, I still got to drill and tap the four holes. So um, get that mill drilled and tap. And then the second op would be obviously to flip it over with the fixture and then finish out the top. We're going to do that later. So I've already probed it. We got the wrench all in there. I've already found all of my uh, work coordinates. So we'll give you a preview here 
of what the program's gonna look like when we're machining it. Facing it, drilling it, there's the chamfer, and then uh, tapping the holes. Now I might have to come back in here and modify something, like for instance, if it doesn't clean up the face, I've only got it set to take 20 thousandths off of here. And these are pretty consistent, so it might clean it up, but we might have to come back in and take another 10 or whatever off there. The other thing is that I may not have the chamfer the correct depth for, you know, when we, when we chamfer the four holes, I might have to modify that. But uh, that's, and that's really helpful being able to go back in to the program and going to each, each event and being able to modify, you know, what we need to modify in there as far as depths go. So like if we go to, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not showing you CNC guys anything you don't already know, chamfer mill, so we've got a depth set there at negative 75 thousandths. That may need to be changed so that we have a wider and deeper chamfer. I'm not sure yet, but uh, anyway, I like to run through the preview like that a couple of times and make sure everything looks good. Usually if there's something that the machine or the program is detecting as bad, it'll show up in red to indicate there's a crash or the tool is going to come across and hit something. All right, so next up, let's go ahead and uh, get this guy machined. Okay, let's give this a try. I hope every, I got everything uh, adjusted correctly. All right, we got it up to 100%. So yeah, it looks like we're not not touching it yet, it just barely started touching it. All right, so we got to make some adjustments on our depth. So we're definitely, it's at a little bit of an angle because we're work, working with a, uh, a rough casting. So we'll go ahead and modify it to uh, take another 10 thousandths off. We'll bring our Z zero down another 10 thousandths in the negative position. All right, made a 10 thousandths adjustment. <laughs> So 
come up, I'm going to hit feed hole so we can take a look at it. Okay, feed hold. Well, I guess you can't do that right there. Do it right there. Air off. Okay. Stop spindle. There is uh, there's one little hollow right here. I don't think that's gonna. It's not really gonna matter. So we're gonna leave it like it is, and we're gonna finish running it. So up next is our drill. All right, we got our air adjusted. Speed hold, cycle start. Kind of scary watching that drill run down that fast. Yeah, we got to make an adjustment on our camper depth. We didn't get that one right. Try it again. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little too deep. Stop spindle. What I'm doing is um, adjusting the air here. Come down and see if this is. Uh, I think it's right, here we go. This is making me really nervous. Look at that. Well, what I'm happy about is that we did not crash a tool on this uh, little practice session right here. It turned out really good. The, uh, the depth 
everything worked out good. My plan was to, I drilled it one inch deep and then we set our tap to go 0.8 inches deep. So it should be 200,000 clearance on the bottom there. But what I can do is just take a uh, half 13 bottom tap and just run those in there by hand just to clean up those last few threads down in the bottom. Try to get just a little bit more depth out of it. The other thing that I'm gonna have to continue to uh, experiment with and learn and play with is the, uh, the finishing of using the uh, face mills like this guy right here. This has been the, uh, been using the Walter face mill. And I've got to really, once you get into CNC stuff, you really got to pay attention to your feeds and speeds a lot more than what you would normally have to deal with on a manual machine. Uh, but that's really going to affect the finish. And I can see it's not that this is bad at all, but I'd love to be able to uh, improve this finish with time. And that's what we're going to continue to do. This is a practice session for me, but I've still got a, uh, a stack of these guys that I got from Jason, you know, probably, I don't know, two or three years ago now that I want to eventually get machined and uh, do something with. So this is a, a great practice session for me right here. So this guy is finished up. Now we should be able to mount our steel fixture plate onto this so that we can flip it over and then have something to uh, clamp to in the vise, in the machine. And we can be able to side mill this thing square and then mill the, uh, the top of it there. So pretty good progress, a little, a little slow, but a little bit of progress is better than no progress, right? We're using my uh, Cleveland four flute bottoming tap here to run our tap holes all the way to the bottom. Now I know that this is not what you would do ideally for a production run but I wanted to make sure that I did not crash the tap so nothing wrong with running the tap in a few holes here just to make sure they're cleaned up and they go down a little bit further there There we go. My Cleveland uh, three tap set, starter, taper, and uh, bottoming tap there. Let's we'll see if our fixture plate fits. Mounting plate anyway. Now I'm gonna have to go, these are the bolts that I got on hand right here. I'm gonna have to cut them off to length because they're a little too long. I just wanted to make sure that our hole pattern lined up. And it looks like it is. Bam, there we go. All right, just got to cut those off and uh, deburr them. And we can get this uh, plate mounted on. Now, what we're going to have to do, actually, my, my plan was is to mount the, um, we're going to have to get the steel plate mounted in the vise where we want it. Uh, use a stop, like this edge stop over here. That way, whenever we stick this, uh, when we mount it to the cast iron fixture plate, when we set it down in there, we can go ahead and slide it into the position in which we indicated the, uh, the steel plate at. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get in there with a probe because I want to locate off of this center line here, not off of the uh, raw casting there. We'll get these cut and get this thing uh, fitted properly.
Okay, we just want to uh, verify that I cut them to the right length there. We just made them an inch long. That should be good. Yep, that's good. That's bottoming out onto the uh, counter bore there. And they're all the same length, so that should be good right there. All right, I'm not going to bolt it down because we've got to change our setup here and uh, get centered up on our steel plate before we set it down in there with it mounted to the cast iron. All right. So this is my thinking on this setup right here. So we've got our Edge Technology Pro Mill Stop. We've got it tight and we can go ahead and set our, we've got all this blown out right here, our jaws. And we just slide this guy over just to where we're pushed up against it. All right, and tighten it up. And that should be our position right there. And so we don't want this in the way during our machining. So go ahead and crack that loose and just let it fall down out of the place. And you're supposed to be able to bring these guys back up, tighten the bolt, it kind of moves a little there tighten it and then we should be right up against the, uh, the stop so if we were swapping out parts take this out put the next one in up against the stop tighten it up and then drop it out of the way All right, so we've got our XY located based off of where this uh, plate is going to be sitting on this stop here. So go ahead and snug it back up, and then we'll take that out so I can get it bolted to the bottom of the cast now. Yep, can't see it real well, so now I gotta get down here and figure out where it's at. There it is. Okay, push it back and just don't want to bump it hard, just want to push it up against the stop, just like that, right there. I'm touching it. I am. So that looks pretty good. All right. So you can certainly position this guy further out so that you don't have to move it every time. Uh, you just got to be careful you don't come across here with your end mill and hit the rod. But I'm just going to drop it out of the way because that's how it's designed. Now we got to worry about anything over here in the way. All right. So uh, that's that right there. Now I need to start working on the program to get this thing milled should be uh, fairly simple. So we need to mill it to 10 inches square. That's what finishes out at. And then of course, machine the top. So I don't know, we may machine the top first and then do the, uh, the perimeter and then do a chamfer. And that's all we're gonna do at this point. I'm gonna come back later and uh, worry about the holes and everything that's gonna go on there for a finished product. But for now, this is gonna be used uh, for some other needs that I, that I have for it. Well, I think I'm ready to uh, run the second op, which will be the top side of our fixture plate right there. I've been taking my time running through the program, making changes, making edits, and um, getting a little bit of help from my friend Steve up at Miltronics, because every time I go through here and I try to add something or modify something, mostly when I try to add a feature, I keep getting hung up on the correct F keys to go into and which things to select uh, so I was doing stuff wrong so I had to kind of wait on him so we could go through it 
and uh, thankfully he's always there to help me. And then we simulate it. He's looking at this over on his computer too and uh, making sure that everything is verified to be correct. So there was something interesting that I wanted to show you guys that Steve taught me and I've got it written down here. I've been, you know, I make my notes here. I've got notes written in the books here. Just some stuff that I can continue to uh, reference as I go through here because I, I can't remember all this stuff. The first time I do it, the second time I do it, doesn't mean I remember it. I have to keep coming in here and working with it to remember what it is I'm doing. And I'm trying, I've got a lot of guys that's probably going to be asking about, why aren't you using Fusion? Why aren't you using CAD CAM? I want to get familiar with the Miltronics conversational. I want to get fluid in this as well as a CAD program. So I want to use both, but for now I'm focused on conversational so that I can use this and not have to rely on Fusion 360. But anyway, what I was saying, I wanted to run this. I got this tip from some other guys that left comments about uh, before you actually come in and run a part, cut air. Come up here you, with the cutter and cut air to see if it's uh, doing, you know, if you've got it set right. So Steve showed me a good trick because what I was doing was modifying my Z finish depth. And you got to remember to go back into the program and fin uh, edit that uh, if you change it. So what he was showing me to do is, let's check this out. Modify Z to prove out program. We're gonna exit out of this. Let me see, it was uh, F7 parameters. Get that reflection off there. F2 chords, all right. And then work G92, which is this guy right here. There's your XYZ and see I've got it changed to two inches, so a positive two. And what that's gonna do is that will bring our cutter two inches above our Z zero. So I've got my Z zero you know, down here, so it's gonna be two inches above there. All right? And then he says this is a lot easier to do this, but you know, of course, once you run the program, gotta come back into this coordinates and change that back to zero right there. So that was a pretty good tip. Let me see if I can, we'll go back into program, last program, and this is the start of it. We'll go ahead and do a preview right here. And you can see the outside milling, the face mill, and the chamfer. That always goes really fast. You can come back in and preview it again and slow it down with your feed control there. So if you wanna watch it go slower, and you can move this around too by using P and Z to um, bring it in, pan and zoom. There's the uh, chamfer right there. And then there's the end of the program. So let's go ahead and do just what I was talking about and run it. Let me see. Run program, I've already done it. So we're gonna do start, cycle start. What I'm trying to do guys is show you my, uh, my learning curve, <clears throat> my learning process here. We'll bring that down. I like to slow it down a little bit on your rapid. Make sure that it's not going to touch, not going to crash. All right. So there we go. We bumped it back up to 100%. And of course, we can bring it all the way around to 200% if we want to. We can see the model working there. And we're making the cut, but we're two inches above our Z0 on our finish in the program, I mean. And I'm gonna be running the air. So the black, the black line is just for air. All right, so that's working. We'll go ahead and turn that up to 200%. And it'll finish this cut out. So it's gonna make a rough cut all the way around and then it'll come back and make a 15,000 finish cut around the outside and that'll bring our fixture to 10 inches square. Now come back in for the finished cut there. By the way, so we're standing here working. Can you guys hear the Kaiser running?
Nice and quiet. I love it. All right, so we should be making a tool change here in just a moment. Now we're going to go in with our two inch Walter face mill. Got to hit cycle start. All right, so we're proving it out. Everything's looking good. The, um, the RPM and feed rate is what I keep changing. I keep modifying. So that right there, the feed rates, is something that I've got to really continue to work with and uh, improve. Keep in mind, I'm learning, I'm practicing, so it's not going to be optimal. We're going to have better feed rates, better speeds and feeds that we can do. I just, I'm saying that because I'll show one little clip here on social media and people are thinking that I'm just doing everything wrong because it's, you're feeding it too slow, you're cutting it too slow. I'm practicing. This is not a production run. This one piece, I'm practicing. I've got to continue to figure this stuff out and learn it and understand the proper feeds and speeds based off the cutters I'm using and the inserts that I'm using. All these years on the manual machine, you turn it on, you set an RPM, and you adjust your feed rate. You know, it's, it's, that's a lot simpler than knowing every single feed rate, speeds and feeds for every cutter in a CNC machine because those you actually have to plug in here and make sure that you get it right. But being a little conservative is going to be okay on some of this stuff. I think we're about to be finished up with our facing op here and then we'll do a tool change to our chamfer. So even the chamfer, I've got a... I got a phone call here. All right, so Abby had called me there in the, in the middle of this because she was telling me about her doctor's visit. So I had to, I had to uh, answer that and uh, talk to her, make sure everything was cool. And it is, everything's good. So anyway, let's get back to what we were talking about here. All right, so I really like that Steve taught me about modifying the uh, in perimeters to adjust our, our Z height so that we can cut air to prove it out. And um, I know that's something that a lot of guys do. I'm just pointing it out because it's something that I just learned for the first time. And that's why I wrote it down right here on the pad. And I'm going to add this to my book there of notes so that I can reference it. I noticed that I'm able to kind of continue to keep going back into the program here. And there's certain things that I am remembering. How to, I know how to modify and change things like that. It's, uh, it's inserting features that we want to do, like uh, when to add mill and end mill. I was doing that wrong earlier and when I was simulating it, it was, uh, it was making the chamfer cut forever and ever, it never would stop. So I kind of had that messed up. But anyway, we've got it set now. So from here, I want to go ahead and uh, run this guy and get this fireball plate machined in. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I've got my feed rate set good. I don't want to set a feed rate too fast where I ended up breaking a cut or something like that. So I'm trying to be a little bit more conservative on the feed rates than what I should be. But once we get to the point where we're going to run a batch of these, because I got 10 of them total, hopefully we'll have everything adjusted right so that we're at our optimal cutting speeds and feeds. I'd lie if I say I wasn't nervous, but I think we're ready to run this part. It really does make me nervous starting this thing. Even though we've already kind of proven it out, I'm just afraid it's going to come in and crash. But Oh well, we're going to figure it out real quick here. So I'm going to hit start and I'm going to just bring it in on rapids kind of slow until we get it, um, until we know we're good to go. And let me see if the camp, the, uh, let me get down here to our depth. I'm going to pause this. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to move that air nozzle so that it's not blocking view of the camera. All right, we'll give this a try, air on, clockwise on, I 
Cycle start, we're going to slow it down. Okay.
I think we had success on this. So I think it worked out pretty good. You guys probably heard the chatter. We had a little bit of chatter in some of these places. I honestly think that it's part of the casting that's, that's doing that. Maybe you had some areas of the cast that's a little bit more harder than others. Maybe you got a little chill in it. I'm not sure, I'm just making speculation. But that worked out good. And I think what I wanna do is go ahead and um, we'll modify our uh, face mill operation and come down, maybe do another 5,000 so. And now one of the things I forgot to mention is that the inserts that I have for these Walter face mills, these inserts are made for steel. They're actually not designated for cast iron. So I actually have a, uh, a pack of inserts from Walter coming that are, that are designed for cast iron cutting like this stuff here. So I don't think these are gonna be your optimal insert to use on this, but we're using it because that's what we got. And it got the job done and it will, but um, we're gonna see if we can, this, is, this particular one is gonna continue to be my test subject that I can use to try to optimize, get good finishes on there. So for the next batch that I wanna do, you know, we'll have everything kind of ready to go. We know it works, what's gonna leave your best finishes or whatnot. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and modify it and just make another pass on here and see if we can improve that finish a little bit. Okay, so I had adjusted the depth 5,000 steeper, so we made a 5,000 cut. I also indexed all the inserts there. I was checking that out, I could tell, I could feel on the corner there that it was starting to get some wear. So we went ahead and indexed it to uh, see if we could improve that finish. And it did pretty good there. Hopefully that's turning out pretty good in video. It looks pretty shiny anyway. Now when you feel it with your fingers, it feels very smooth to the touch. So I believe one of the things we were doing, that first cut where we actually cleaned it up, we were taking, we had it set for 30 thousandths. So it was probably getting deeper on this side right here. And you know, we've got this longer reach so we could have a little deflection in there as well. As I mentioned before, we're gonna be adding the, the short gauge length uh, for our two inch mills. We're just waiting on that holder to, to arrive. But that looks good right there. I would love to improve on our uh, RPM and uh, feed rate there to see if you can get an even nicer finish than that. But this is, this is definitely uh, a really nice finish, beautifully done. I did go ahead and chamfer it again as well. We just took another 5 thousandths off of that. So we got a nice smooth chamfer there. This part is done on what I'm wanting to do with this particular fixture plate. I'm gonna go get my vacuum and start cleaning some of this stuff up. And uh, I wanna get some of the machine cleaned up from this cutting right here. All right, guys, well, that's gonna finish up this, uh, this video and this part of the project that I, that I wanted to get accomplished. So from here, what I wanted to do, I just wanted to get a nice uh, flat surface on this fixture plate to start with. I'm gonna pull out one of my uh, Biax power scrapers and this is gonna be my test subject. I need to get a little practice in and I wanna work on a uh, crosshatch pattern that I'm gonna to apply to our American Pacemaker compound. So actually that piece right there, the, these two surfaces right here, I want to use the power scraper to do a crosshatch pattern in there for oil. We're not gonna be worried about the base right there. That doesn't need to be done. We're just gonna do, this is the top side, so that'll be flipped over. And um, that's one of the reasons I wanted a good surface there to uh, practice on. I haven't done it in a while, so I need to kind of get my rhythm down, get the uh, stroke length figured out, and get a good crosshatch pattern. So it's easy enough to set this back in the mill after you, you, know, you mess the surface up, deck it again another 5,000 at a time or whatever you need to to clean it up and bring it right back to way, the way you see it right there. So I wanna work on this and then jump on our American Pacemaker compound. So this is coming really soon, get all this stuff back together. I know it's been a delayed project, but we're gonna get on it pretty soon. And, um, and then once we get that, we'll get back on these uh, fixture plates later on and uh, start working on getting our hole pattern figured out. We're gonna put our half 13 holes in there. We've got quarter 20 tapped holes and then we have quarter inch dial pin holes that we drill and ream in there as well. So a lot of really good operations that is gonna allow me to continue practicing and learning how to apply 
these uh, machining techniques to, to the CNC machining side of things instead of going to the manual mill like I've always done, uh, learning how to do this and use the CNC machine to get it done quickly and effectively and create beautiful parts there. So it's just all part of my learning journey with the CNC work and you know I hope you guys have uh, had fun kind of following at least with today's video and seeing what I've been getting into and I'm going to continue uh, playing with this stuff and working with our CNC machines and keep learning and, and uh, trying new things. So with that, we're going to sign off. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for checking it out. And I hope you see, I hope to see you here on the next video. All right.